I'm Stefan Belts and I'm the Managing Director of Strassen Company. One of our problems is that we're in the secondary market. We, we don't compete with galleries to be marketing artists' work directly from the artist, uh, which does mean we're dependent on what comes onto the market from, shall we say, private sources. And that's still very limited in terms of African art, and I'm now talking of art north of South Africa. Obviously, African art emanating in South Africa, we've been dealing with very comfortably for, for very many years and very successfully. And we've taken the step of actually doing online auctions, uh, open for a two-week period or whatever, and we're attracting bidders from small towns all over South Africa. People who would normally not come near us uh, are now happily bidding, whether it's the doctor's wife in Rates or Bethlehem or wherever, uh, and it's proving very successful. Contemporary art is fetching very high prices in many, or some contemporary artists are fetching very But I think one must bear in mind that the older school of artists, the very best is now so tightly held so that if you're a new collector into the market, your chances of procuring a, a whatever, a good pianist for a good bat, Walter Battis even, uh, is they don't come onto the market or they come on so rarely and when they are, they're so heavily sought after that you pushed out very, very early in the, the score. An artist's work can be too rare, uh, and there's some interesting examples in South African art. Uh, the one is Caldecott, uh, who's what some 30, 40 paintings, all recorded. The best ones are again tightly held in galleries and so forth. People are not, the market is not conscious of them because they're not appearing in the market. Uh, the same is with Adolf Jensch, the Namibian landscape artist, highly successful, highly sought after at one stage, but when it was realized there were also only some 30 oils, and again very tightly held, and that's detrimental to the, to the trade. And one finding it with a contemporary artist too, it's a bit unfair to name names, but there are two or three, there's a sculptor, there's or two sculptors who really produce one work a year, one work every two years, uh, it's not enough to be generating an interest, so they've got to get, and invariably it's a commission. So although they're being successful and they're highly acclaimed, they haven't got a place in the secondary market as such. Whereas somebody like William Kentridge, and, and I'd, I'd, I'd like to believe it's, he didn't consciously endeavor to do this, but he's as successful at branding as what Maserati or Ferrari is, in the sense that with with Ferrari, if you can't afford the car, you can afford the cap. With William, if you can't afford the original drawing, you can afford that multi-print. So we can all own a Kentridge, which is marvelous, actually, because it opens it up to a very broad public, but it also makes for a very popular, watched, uh, keenly followed market. I'm a little concerned because a lot of people are what we call flipping artworks. They're not buying it because of real passion or really want to own it. They see a potential of making a quick buck. And I think in our present climate, a lot of them are coming a cropper. We're already feeling it in the auction market. The market's softening considerably for some artists. But it's a sifting out process, a very natural sifting out process. I can assure you that of the, I don't know, 100 top names in South Africa at the moment amongst contemporary artists, Perhaps 20 are going to survive the next 10, 15 years. The three artists I would feel are still going to be then uh, is William Kentridge, Deborah Bell, and Carl Nell. I think, and then of course uh, Bossoff as a sculptor. I think those four will still be in the top bracket and, and sought after.